So now that we understand the process involved with gravimetric analysis, it can be really useful for us to look at uh, possible errors that can occur in, in this process. And basically by understanding the errors that can occur and the, the effect that they have on our calculations, it can really help to sort of really help us to get a deeper understanding of what's going on with this uh, with this analysis. So when we're looking at errors, basically when we when we're analyzing the effect of an error, what we want to figure what we want to what we want to sort of break it down to is we want to compare the our calcul so we're dealing with what we're working out in gravimetric analysis is the percentage by mass of a substance. So what we want to break down an error to, we want to work out if the calculated percentage by mass which you know is affected by errors in so this is the this is the the figure that we obtain by experimentally, and we want to see if this is higher or lower than the actual percentage by mass. So the calculated percentage by mass we obtain from experiments, and so it's going to be it's going to be affected by any errors that we make. The actual percentage by mass is kind of the true value that we would love to obtain. That's what we're kind of striving for when we conduct these sorts of procedures. So basically, we want to when we're analysing the effect of an error on this process, we want to see if it makes our calculated percentage by mass higher or lower than what it should have been. If it makes it higher or lower than the actual percentage by mass. So using the same example we had earlier, we'll just say that we've got a bit of food here and we've put it in solution. Okay, and we've got, basically we want to measure the sodium chloride content of this food. We want to measure how much NaCl is in there. So again, we're going to add this solution containing some silver ions we're going to put that in there to create some precipitate, etc, etc. So then we're going to filter it, heat it, weigh it, and all that. Now, one of the first possible error that we're going to look at is if we know that the silver ions here, we're trying to film a uh, silver chloride precipitate in this solution. So we're trying to form some AgCl precipitate. And so we know that we need to add silver ions in excess in order to ensure that all of the chloride from the sodium chloride is precipitated into silver chloride. So the first possible error that can occur is if the silver ions are not in excess. Now if the silver clients, if the silver ions are not in excess, then the first the, the immediate consequence of that is not all of the chloride ions will precipitate. So if we don't add excess, then we're not we're going to be left with lots of chloride ions that don't precipitate. That's the reason we're adding excess is to ensure that we can get as many chloride ions as possible, if not all of the chloride ions, to form a precipitate in the solution. So if we don't add in if we don't add excess silver ions, then not all of the chloride ions will precipitate. As a result, we're going to have less precipitate here, less precipitate throughout here, and our measured mass here of silver chloride will be too low because we'll have less sodium, less silver chloride than we should have. So our measured mass of silver chloride will be too low. That is to say, it'll be lower than it should have been. And as a result, because our, if our, if our uh, measured mass of silver chloride is too low, then basically we're going to think there are less chloride ions than, we, than there should be. Well, we're going to think there are less chloride ions than there actually are in this solution here. We're going to think that there are less, there is less sodium chloride than there actually is. So basically our percentage by mass of sodium chloride will be too low. That means our percentage by mass of sodium chloride that we have calculated will be less than the actual percentage by mass. So that's going to be the result of not adding excess silver ions. Now, another error that can occur quite easily is if when we're as we filter as we filter and then heat to constant mass out this 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 silver chloride precipitate here, if this is not dry when we gain our final weight. So basically, uh, if if we haven't heated to constant mass, maybe we've just measured measured the weight once, or we've we've heated a few times, but it hasn't. We haven't quite gotten it to constant mass, and there's still a bit of water in this silver chloride here. So if this is not dry, then what we're going to have is we're going to have the right amount of silver chloride plus some H2O molecules tacked in there, 
And so that means this extra mass due to the H2O molecules will mean will mean that our measured mass of silver chloride will be too high because we'll be measuring the mass of silver chloride and water and we'll think all that water is extra silver chloride. So the, our measured mass of silver chloride will be too high. Now as a result of that, uh, we're going to think there are more chloride ions than there are and we're going to think there's more sodium chloride than there is and so our percentage by mass, our calculated percentage of sodium chloride will also be too high. That means our calculated percentage by mass of chlor sodium chloride will be higher than the actual percentage by mass. So what I should have written up here is our percentage of sodium chloride is too low. That doesn't actually mean anything by itself. What we, what, what I, what we should be saying is our calculated percentage by mass. So our calculated percentage by mass of sodium chloride is lower than the actual mass. So it's all about these two keywords, calculated and actual. Now the last error that we're going to look at now is the idea that in here we know we're forming a precipitate of silver chloride but there is a possibility that another precipitate will be formed or will be present. Now this may be due to perhaps when we've dissolved this food not all of the food it was soluble and there may have had, there may have been some parts of the food that uh, weren't, weren't that didn't dissolve and so remained in the solution in solid form. Uh, alternatively, maybe when we added these silver ions, they reacted with some other ions that were in the fruit to form another precipitate besides silver chloride. So in either case, we're going to have more solid mass. We're just going to have more solid in solution than we should. We're going to have too much solid in our solution. And that means if we take it all through here, all this solid is going to be unaffected by the filtration and the heating. And so we're going to have silver chloride here. We're going to be weighing the silver chloride and this other precipitate that's in here. We're going to be so basically we're going to think that this extra this extra precipitate is silver chloride, and our measured mass of silver chloride will be too high because we'll have we'll have added this other precipitate to the silver chloride here, and so we'll measure a greater mass than we should. So our measured mass silver chloride will be too high. Now as a result, again, like it's the same as in this situation, that means that our calculated percentage by mass of sodium chloride will also be too high. That means our calculated percentage by mass of sodium chloride will be higher than the actual percentage by mass. So in each of these cases, each of these possible errors, basically the way we've the way we've sort of figured out their effect is by first looking at the error and looking at its immediate effect. In this case, you know there's going to be more solid in here. In the case of uh, not uh, of silver ions that aren't in excess, we're going to have not enough silver chloride. In the case of uh, moist silver chloride or not fully dry silver chloride here, we're going to have sort of extra mass that we're weighing. And so we've got to look at that immediate effect, that immediate consequence of the error, and then uh, look at the effect of that immediate consequence and carry that through the calculations that we perform. Carry that through the sort of thought process involved with gravimetric analysis to see what it's, the ultimate effect of the error is on our calculated percentage by mass. So we really need to go through methodically and step by step to see how these sorts of errors uh, sort of affect our calculations. And so that's there are, there are a few sort of common and, and sort of a few common and, and interesting examples of some of the errors that can happen in gravimetric analysis.